Hello. Today is one of those days. It's cold. The wind is howling. Get yourself some tea. I'm going to play you something I really want you to hear. So put on your hearing ears and listen. And you will get information on how to obtain this for yourself. But go find your Shakti cluster app. Of operation. Self-love is necessary for you to operate your telepathic powers. Telepathic powers operate among all animals, all non-human species. So prairie dogs are telepathic with each other. I often use the analogy of prairie dogs for students of planetary tantra. You need self-love. You need self-love and as I showed you in several of my others, the load on point for you on the Shakti Cluster app, which is best to be a handheld app, not on your cell phone like I have. But if you did what I did, which was create a screenshot, I have on here, and it's an airplane mode, I have my Shakti Cluster app right here from metahistory.org. That's the whole entire archival library of John Lim's uh, work. Point 0.16, okay, point 0.16. That's right. That is where you recognize yourself as Rome. Point 0.18, the amber spot above, that is Gaia Sophia. You have to know her story. You have to know the narrative in order for this to work for you. And above everything else, you have to love yourself. Okay? Love, loving yourself and self-love. What has culture on this planet been about for most of us? It's been about self-hatred, self-guilt, self-denial. Uh, pleasure is bad. No, it isn't. Pleasure is actually the pathway. The pleasure is the pathway. So... With that in mind, we talked about the Agon as the, um, the contest. Well, it's truly a battle for preservation of life against the biophobic parasites, the Xenosh, spawn of the Archons. These, this is all available. I'll send you links, but it's on metahistory.org. Basically, you need your true imagination and you need the Shakti Cluster app if you care about your ass at all and your life as you know it. It's a, the primary tool of autogenic magic. I come across as ho, 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 ha, 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 all fun and games. I assure you, I am not. I am capable of violence. Ask my boyfriend, who I've known for eight years, going on nine. All right? He corners me. He knows what it's like to feel the wrath of Kali. Here we go. Listen up. Okay. Sounds good. There are two things that you need to know that everyone needs to know about the Gnostic message. And if you don't register this and get it on board right now as you're listening to me and keep it in the forefront of your mind, then don't even bother go investigate Gnosticism. Don't even get involved. Because if you can't keep the primary features of the Gnostic message in your mind, you will not be able to benefit from that message. There are two things that everyone investigating Archons has to know about the Gnostic view. The first is that the Gnostic narrative of the, of the Sophia says that Sophia herself, our cosmic mother from the planetary from the galactic core produced the archons. She produced them by an accident, or what is called in the Gnostic writings in Greek, anomou, A-N-A-M-O-U, an anomaly. Now, anybody, I advise you, anybody who talks about the archons, whether it be Laura Eisenhower or Jay Widener or anyone else, and who does not cite the Gnostic material telling you that the planetary goddess herself produced them is not to be trusted. Period. Okay? 
Uh -huh. Second point, second point. The thing that you need to know if you want to get involved with narcissism and investigate it through my book and my site is that the myth of the Aeon Sophia, the fallen goddess scenario, is unique in two ways. One I've already explained. It is the single, coherent, and comprehensive plot of Earth evolution and the origin of humanity ever produced by the human mind. That is a fact. The second thing you need to know about it is that it is an unfinished myth. It is a myth of participation. It is a myth that you become involved in and whose outcome is decided by your involvement. Do you understand that? It's a participant. It's technically what mythologists call a participatory myth. Now, the Gnostics left us a clue that at some point in the future, relative to their time, 2,000 years ago, an event would occur on this planet called the deorthosis of Sophia. And that word deorthosis may be translated as correction. This subject of the correction of the Sophia is to me the most important subject on this planet from anyone who cares about the future of the planet. And I'm not afraid to take a monopolistic or megalomythic, uh, megalomaniac stance on that. I consider that to be of paramount importance. Well, I think so every, we are everybody, now, everybody wants the correction. They might not know right. the term, but there everybody is looking for this and uh, wanting to be a part of it. A lot right. of we want to make we want to make right the lies. We want to overturn the lie. We want to make right what is wrong on this planet, and that and the mythological uh, cue for doing that is called Sophia's correction, about which I have spoken extensively. It was my understanding of Sophia's correction, which began in March of 2014. I plotted the whole reset for Sophia's correction in the Gaian navigation experiment. The point of that correction, the focus of that correction, brought me to white genocide. And that is why in August of 2014, just a few months into her correction, I decided to come forth and take a stance on that subject. Now, why is it that you think these archons are putting together this plan? Why are white people so... Uh, so hated by this God, it seems to me that perhaps it, it, this God is either jealous or is uh, upset that he can't fully control white people. Perhaps they pre present some kind of an obstacle. Is there any uh, hints in the, the Gnostic text as to, as to why white genocide might be taking place? Not really any direct or literal hints, Kyle. This is the point where we have to take responsibility for our participation in the myth. And we have to take up the baton, as it will, and take up the banner and the Gnostic message and carry forth the completion of the myth. That, my friend, is done by participation. Participation involves recognizing yourself is it resonating with you? Then yes, you're Rome. If you're crying with tears of joy and gladness like I did when I discovered that I was the child of Ionic Mother, Mother Sophia, and that my father God wasn't this destructive a-hole that turned other men against women, look at what happens to women in certain so-called so belief systems. And so think about the insight that... Uh, you can achieve when you go, wow, wow, <laughs> I'm a mother, I'm not a motherless child, I have a mother, she's no longer the Holy Ghost, and the Trinity is that the earth is a star goddess, and the sun and the moon and the star goddess are the true Holy Trinity, and that Jupiter is in the embodiment in the transmitted, transmittance dish of the Latte, our daddy. So, we're the Rome, the magical child of the Ionic Mother, 
And we can work our powers, but it has to be a co-dynamic, co-creative process. It's not all by yourself. We're not in a narcissistic fantasy of how self-important we are as white people. We just happen to have the software. I talked to you about the computers modeling after us. We think we're supposed to get downloaded something from out there. Something's going to come to us from out there. Some star being is going to beam us information. Oh, no, no, no. That's what's the whole thing about IT and cement and cities is they take you away from nature. Unless you regularly get into nature and tune into nature, you're going to forget your senses. You're going to forget the ability to use your senses to empower yourself. And you used the Shakti Cluster app to tune in to the telluric field of the earth and all the other people who have com committed themselves to this. And it's not, I'm not giving you a sales pitch. I'm just so excited that I have tools at hand. I'm sharing it with you. This isn't a form of make-believe. It's a direct net recognition of the source of your life. Um, which is also the wellspring of your imaginative capabilities. As a human animal, we are animals. And so use this um, tool, the Shakti Cluster app, as for your autogenic magic. It is magic. And here he goes um, on this page, quote, Sophia looks and feels at moments like make-believe. I have made this observation emphatically in a few talks, and I'll continue to make it. Therein, ri therein resides the Agon, the contest. To quote the dark meme from the Mission Impossible TV series, your mission, if you decide to accept it, if you decide to accept it, is to mount the powers of your imagination against the archontic deceit and simulation until that deceit collapses and all that remains is the gnosis of the living dream. The proof that what you know is real, believe it or not. And again, this is an airplane mode. I just have these tools at hand. That's all I have because I'm out of town. I'm house sitting. <laughs> so I'm sitting in a house. I would like for you to um, explore uh, and I will send you information. Uh, if you read below, that's how I'll send it to you. Go ahead. Subscribe to my station. Look up John Lamb Lash's work. I'm a fan. I'm a student of his on the internet. Go to Gaiaspora.org. I think I've spelt it wrong before. But it's G-A-I-A-S-P-O-R-A.org. Gaia, like Mother, you know, Sophia, Gaia. G-A-I-A, Spora, like the, the seeds of, of Gaia, of which... I think you can put two and two together and figure it out for yourself, S-P-O-R-A dot org. And there you can find out about the Nemeta School. You can go to Nemeta dot org, N-E-M-E-T-A dot org, and then Meta History is M-E-T-A History, H-I-S-T-O-R-Y, which is the only history I want to know about. So um, we've been lied to about our history, and I'm not going to tell you what to think. But figure it out for yourself. Find out, what, find out what resonates with you. Look into it. Look into all these things that you've probably felt before. I understand history as being what the victors wrote. They're the ones that write the history. And the Gnosis, the, all the Gnostics, they were killed off and their library was killed off. The Nag Hammadi text is the only remnant left. And it's had to be... Um, interpreted. You haven't got enough time in your lifetime to go through it, my friend. John Lamb Lash has done the work. And I am not a sheep of his to be actually promoting his work. I am a person who will tell you under 100% truth of my being that when I heard the Sophianic myth as told to him in his um, reliance with Oh my goodness, Lisa Harrison, who is now ooh, flown off, woo, 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 I don't know where she is, but she's uh, now on her own piece of the pie. I'm telling you this, I know for certain what I am. I know I'm a magical child, and I intend 100% to use the Shakti Cluster app 
and hand held in a piece of paper and laminated. But in the meantime, I took a screenshot. Yeah, I'm using this as a way to teach me my uh, autogenic magic. That's how I'm doing it right now. And I am going to just simply tell you this. You can actually commit this to memory like a Reiki teacher, master, and then you put it in your throat and you operate it from there. And so I look at this every single day and I use it every single day, recognizing who I am, recognizing that the self-love I've been seeking my entire life was not achievable until I recognized how the divine plan had been hijacked. And the divine plan being when the Aeon Sophia fell from the core of our galaxy and plunged and became mass. And in her imagination, she became the sun, the moon, and the earth. So you're going to find out about the archons. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into story time with you. There's just lots of information about that. This is the one thing I will tell you, that they're not to be feared. They're just mental parasites. If you find yourself thinking things like, oh, I'm a bad person, that's how you're getting uh, your self-love undermined. You are a divine child. Those thoughts are not your own. Recognize them. Go, thought, you know, oh, you suck. You'll never amount to anything. It's futile. You can't do it. Who are you? <laughs> I will look at you and say, that's not my belief. That's an infection. Now go away. Go count the hairs on the cat. Go count the stars in the entire universe. And then you recognize, wow, life's pretty darn good. I have my health. I have a cup of tea. I have this lovely house. I make wonderful love with my boyfriend. And we've known each other for eight years. And pretty soon it's going to be nine. It's going to be nine almost. And I have had to turn my back on him. And draw the line and create boundaries because he is still healing and he may not uh, make it as far as my boyfriend forever, but he's my boyfriend for right now. And he's respecting me and he's respecting the goddess of who I am. And so therefore, I've accepted him into my life as a supporter of me, as a man who can protect his woman, as a man who loves his woman. So, time to do some kundalini exercises and remember, sex is really important. Having a good sex life is really important with one person, preferably. I'm not going to pass judgment, but you should be using protection. And if anything, um, you, I advise you learn self-love, meaning, really, with your hands? Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Get off the computer porn. Find your G-spot, ladies. I'll flip through some magazines, I'll read erotic novels, um, read erotica, and uh, just things that are more realistic than the things you see on porn, which are actually um, degrading and stupid, and a minutia of the fantastic sex you can actually have, and the delightful feelings you can have with a lover who's attentive to you. All for now.